Tonight, we continue to honor Oklahoma's black history. The fight for civil rights in Oklahoma is as old as the state itself. News 4's Ken Ogle profiles Roscoe Dungy, the founder and editor of the state's first black-owned newspaper, established shortly after statehood. This is Dungy School, named for Roscoe Dungy, on the outskirts of the east side of Oklahoma City, somewhat forgotten and obscure now. But we can't let that happen to the memory of the man Roscoe Dungy, whose character, commitment, and acts of courage enrich our lives, even now. He was born in Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, to an, an ex-slave, his father John um, Dungy, um, who worked as a Baptist preacher and moved the family to Oklahoma to help organize the Baptist church here with, inside the black community. Um, the interesting thing about Roscoe is he didn't start his Black Dispatch, which was Oklahoma City's only black newspaper, until he was 32 years old. And with the Black Dispatch newspaper started in 1915, Roscoe Dungy made his voice heard loud and clear. When other newspapers called the burning of Tulsa's Black Wall Street a riot or a race war, the Black Dispatch accurately called it murder, as we now know it was a massacre. As a young man, Dungy attended one year at Oklahoma's Colored Agricultural and Normal School, now known as Langston University. And he didn't have much education. He was self-taught. But he, uh, he was adamant with civil rights. He backed Claire, Claire Looper. He backed Ada Louise Sipple Fisher. A lot of the things that changed in Oklahoma were backed by the Black Dispatch and the courage of, of Roscoe Dungy. Dungy became a civil rights leader, including fighting for equal schools, as heard in this early Channel 4 News film. Douglas High School is a sham and a fake. It looks pretty, and from that standpoint, it's perhaps the best school in town with its air-cooled principal's office. But the guts of the thing is what I'm talking about. Negro children cannot get the same type of education there they can secure at Central High. And he always fought to make sure Oklahoma City's residents, African-American residents, not only tried to get fair treatment, but also worked behind the scenes in the business community too. He was always pushing black businesses and, and thought that was an aspect of achieving what, what the community could achieve. Dungy published the Black Dispatch newspaper for decades. Even a young Ralph Ellison worked for the paper for a while. The paper's no more, and Dungy passed away in 1965. But it's on the shoulders of brave activists like Roscoe Dungy and his contemporaries that today's civil rights leaders are standing. Ken Ogle, Oklahoma's News 4. And we hope you'll join us for a 30-minute special presentation honoring black history, sharing our stories on Friday, February 24th at 6.30, right here on News 4, and then at 8.30, February 24th on our sister station, KAUT. Ken said something important there, brave, because those early yes. civil rights leaders were very brave, tough people. That was an excellent piece. Yeah.